Nobody even knew what the word entrepreneur meant. I mean, even if you make a lot of money, you'll really never be wealthy or prosperous. You can't be. Like two, three years, they're like, oh, this is the hardest thing. And then after a few years, they're like, nowhere to be found. Like nowhere to be found, like disappeared, right? Welcome to another episode of the Dan Lok Show. Today, I am so, so, so excited. I, we have a legend with us today. And now, let me just share a little bit of story with you. This is a man that I've been studying for now over, I don't know, 13, 14 years. <laughs> in, in the beginning of my career, in my early 20s, um, I actually have in, in my house, a, a section of all his materials. Uh, back then, it was like cassette tapes. That's right, not MP3. It's cassette tapes and and also VHS tapes that I have collected over the years. And Jay Abraham, you if you have been online, if you've been studying marketing, or Jay would be no stranger to you. He is truly a legend. Someone who has consulted with tens of thousands of companies in over a thousand industries. Pretty much. Anyone in marketing, you would see, you talk to them who's been any length of time, they would tell you they've studied Jay's work one, one way or the other. Jay's work has impacted them one way or the other. He's also known as a $21.7 billion man. That's how much value he's helped companies generate. Nowadays, a lot of the marketing guys are teaching marketing. You could, a lot of those concepts, they, quite frankly, they, it's, they stole it from Jay. <laughs> they got it from Jay. Jay is pretty much the, the, uh, the, the, the source of the material. So, Jay, it's an honor um, that we can finally connect and for you to, have, to be on the show. Well, well first of all, I'm uh, very grateful. Second of all, I'm delighted and thrilled to learn that you have uh, uh, some roots with me. It makes me very, very happy. And just as and I'll say this publicly, I'm also going to give you I have a hard drive that has 35 full-length programs we used mm. to do when we did the mar mastermind marketing and the protege. I'm going to send you all those too. I think you'll get a kick out of them. Now, Jay, did there's so much information, so much of your work. I mean, like you said, there are hundreds of program books, interviews. Uh, for this interview, because I know your material so well, okay. I want to do something a little different. I, I want to ask questions that people who may not usually ask, right? Sure. So in the beginning of your career, how did you decide that you want to be the, the super consultant for companies? Uh, well, it was an accidental process. I'm the accidental uh, super consultant. So I started off, Dan, uh, very sincerely at age 18. I, had, I got married. We had kids right away. I had two kids at 20. Nobody cared. And the only people that give me a job wasn't really a salary job. They were crazed entrepreneurs who would give me a desk and a phone and say, you can have a piece of whatever you can sell, kid. And when you only eat when you earn, you find, find out very quickly what works, what doesn't, and you concentrate towards that. But I was mm. a job transient, and I jumped all the time from industry to industry. And after about eight or 10, I realized people in industry A had no clue what people in industry B, C, D did, mm. strategy, sales approach, access vehicles, business model, value propositions, preemptive advantage, anything like that. And I started borrowing very commonplace techniques from one mm. industry, combining two or three of them together into a hybrid, applying them to industries that didn't know anything about it, and it just killed. It was great. We did IC Hot, the product that you know. We did Entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Then I got into the investment field. And I started having knowledge that nobody else did. I studied uh, along that some very profound people from earlier than my era, but I became very adroit at understanding the psychology of human uh, interactive motivations, mm. sort of psychological stimuli. Mm. And I was able to find all kinds of companies who worked very hard and cared very deeply and were committed to making a difference, but they couldn't market their way out of a paper bag. They didn't understand sequential selling. They didn't understand residual value. They didn't understand how to how to get more people to convert and buy. They didn't understand how to take away the um, the risk. And I became this golden haired, I'm not golden haired, I'm dark, but I became this golden haired, figuratively speaking, boy in all these different industries. And because I 
made a contribution to all these overnight successes. I mean, we grew, truthfully, many of them 500, 900%, 1,000% in a mm. year. And it wasn't mm. because I was that great, just so we're clear on it. It was that I just had knowledge nobody else had, like the one-eyed man in the land of the blind. But after a while, everybody said, you got to get Jay Abraham. You got to get him working for you. You got to get him mm. working for you, not your competition. We used to run ads saying, pray, he, 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 uh, he works for you and not, and not your competitor. Crazy. Yes. It was hilarious. But yeah, I got, but I just sort of evolved. And after a while, very honestly, the best of all worlds, your outrageous but documented reputation becomes your calling card, really. Mm-hmm. That everybody knows and everybody's calling you. But it's interesting. I remember even back then, you position yourself as the premium right from the like, get go. Because most consultants, as you know, where they would, oh, let's, let's just charge average price. I remember back then, I think I saw an ad saying that, like, back then, like $3,000 an hour. Now you're probably way more like $10,000 an hour. I'm just guessing. We, we do 120000 a day. Yeah, $120,000 a day. So, but back then, even $3,000, it was an obscene amount of like, money for, for like an hourly yeah, consulting. It, 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 but I'll tell you what I started, just so... Yeah. Uh, you want to know my strategy. Mm. I had a different strategy back then, and I'd be happy to share because it's pretty yes. cool. Yes, yes. So I'll give it to you in different parts. Uh, it has different evolutions. So when mm. I started be- doing this really and wanting to super position myself, I already had a, 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 a lo- nobody knew who I was in the beginning, but they knew the businesses that I was sort of behind the scenes on. Mm. As I said, I see hot. Uh, in in a year and a half, grew from a few thousand to five hundred thousand buyers, and an entrepreneur grew, you know, nine hundred percent and became preemptive. And every, everyone knew what they were, but nobody knew who I was. Mm. And in an industry, they started saying, "Who did all that?" And my name came up, came up, came up. I decided because I had the ability to understand how to correlate, how to um, contrast, how to compare, how to add, how to concretize intangible value, if that makes sense. Mm, Yes. Because in the work I did, I helped uh, 20 or 30 newsletter advisors, people who who were the icons for real estate, for business opportunity, for uh, option trading. And I had to figure out how to denominate their ability beyond just generic. So I became very, very good at taking almost anyone with skill and a reasonable track record mm. and make, making them seem uh, genuine like they were invaluable. And so I started doing it finally for myself. Mm. And the first way I did it was saying that basically whatever price I charged was irrelevant given the, you know, the history of performance mm. and that at the level that I was working at, Mm. Uh, you know, hourly is a joke. It, that makes no sense. Mm. But if I had to charge something, it's got to be at least 3000 mm. because, you know, I'm worth it. And I started showing all kinds of things that I knew that others didn't. In our marketing, for example, we didn't just titillate. We would run, this is hilarious. You might've seen them. We used to run 16 and 20 page ads yes. in the in-flight magazines. Yes, yes. But they weren't just hyperbole. Three to four pages would be actual distillations of concepts, principles, and strategies people could use right then. Would be just distilled and laid out. And that back then was like a pioneer of like education marketing, right? Yeah, it was there. nobody was yeah. no one was everyone was titillating. We were just saying here's something, and it, and and you can use it anywhere in any universal. But what we mm. did that really blew people's mind, Dan, mm. and I was very proud of it. We would run three full pages that would have about twenty five. Uh, testimonials and success stories, but you know how most people will run uh, JS uh, Illinois. Mm. Mm. We had people from all over the world. We had the name of their business. Mm. We had their story, and we had their daytime phone number with a disclaimer saying, "If this is the last mile you need in order to make a decision, then call them, but don't be don't disrespect." That time, yes. Yeah, and we actually mm-hmm. had a qualifier that said, you must understand when somebody like these people go out of their way mm-hmm. to give not just a testimony, but to give their access information, their phone number, mm-hmm. it's not for Jay. It's they want to make sure that they do everything in their power to help people deserving like you get access to something that's going to transform your business. So we were very good at positioning. I don't yes. Know it's good. Yes. We had and, one more thing, and you'll get a yes. kick out of this. Yes. And, and this is, you'll, you can use this. Love so it. When I was in the seminar business, 
we did a quarter billion dollars mm. in a few years, which is mm. back then was pretty amazing. And we spent yes. almost nothing. Mm. And the reason was I had helped all kinds of entrepreneurs, Success Magazine, uh, Entrepreneur Magazine, 20 investment newsletters, make millions, of, actually hundreds of millions of dollars. Mm. And they were very comfortable signing outrageous but truthful endorsement letters about me. Mm. But that wasn't what did it. I had a really cool strategy. Mm. We got to the point where back then we were charging $50,000 a day mm. for consulting. Yes. Now, one other thing I was going to say, mm. before the world got so diffused and, mm. and uh, digitally obsessed, entrepreneurs were dependable. So if you made a deal on performance where you gave them knowledge and they had to act on it and execute, they would do it. Today, mm. it's different. You have to be very careful because people equivocate, procrastinate, divert. But when mm. I was starting, you could depend on them to do that. I mm. wanted more than a short-term fee. I wanted a percentage of the increased profit I created for a business from many different facets, from improving mm. what they were doing right now in the revenue system, new markets, new products, new selling approaches, new, you know, new distribution channels. So I would run very expensive pricing as a contrast to make giving me 25 or 33 percent of increased profits seem like a blessing if that makes sense so because if they want to hire you just just a paid consultant it's going to be 50 grand for a day. Yeah, 50 grand it's just minimum right yeah. so then instead of doing that they would say well i could get jay and i know if, if i can give jay a percentage of profit i know he's going to work hard I know it's going to... And I, and I was making millions of dollars from the clients because I, I, I knew how to make what I'll call performance-based, highly leverageable assets and activities and, and brand value. I knew how to make it produce many times more. I still do, mm. but they didn't. So I could see somebody that had a, a bad headline or a bad call to action or a bad, bad Offer, positioning yeah. mm. or a bad conversion or they only sold... A hundred dollar item, and they didn't understand how to sell a five hundred or a five thousand or a fifty thousand. And I could just add those elements very easily, and all of a sudden, a business that was making five hundred grand is making five million, and I'm getting paid every month for the use of it. You know, twenty five, fifty, hundred grand. So it was great for me. But when we did the seminar business, you'll get a big kick out of this. It was very legitimate, but you ask about positioning. Mm. So we would send with the endorsers would endorse my seminar. But first, I would ask them preemptively to send a letter out that I underwrote, I paid for, mm. and it told about me and it offered their audience a one day $50,000 consult. Mm. We, Dan, were thrilled if we broke even. It wasn't designed to make money. It was wow. designed to position the second communication as being unbelievably, yes. uh, outrageously appealing. Yes. So if we got one client and it cost me 50 grand for the mailing and I got a $50,000 consult, even, yeah. yay. Yeah. But then we'd go behind with a letter from the endorser that would say, so many people were incredulous about a man that could charge that much. They no way they wanted to pay it, but they wrote and asked us if he's real, is there any way we can afford some kind of access? And then it would say, we asked Jay and he said, sure. Get 500 of them together at five grand a piece, and the economy's of scale. I'll do mm. a three day, and for each one, it's the equivalent of $150 yes. or 150,000 yes. or five grand. Yes. And we just nailed it greatly. Then we'd go behind and pull off the people that, that came on the list, and we'd say, So many people still uh, were incredulous, but yes, they couldn't I remember afford it. That. And we'd do the, then we'd do the home study home before study anyone did home yes. studies That's at right. 2,500. Then we'd pull that off. And we'd sell a four hundred dollar book. I mean, it was hilarious, but it was very integrative. I don't know if that makes sense or not. hundred percent, hundred because I have some of those sales letters. So yeah, and, and it worked very well. Yes. But then, I mean, all along we're making, we're still working with experts and icons. I always spent more time really doing it than teaching it, which gave me a great, a great, uh, a great credibility. Mm. I was doing Tony Robbins. I was doing all these prominent newsletters. I was doing dozens and dozens and now it's been hundreds of eight like yourself either directly mm. indirectly mm. you know I was Stephen Covey was telling how great I was uh you know it, you know there's different icons in different eras but whoever they were uh, a large portion of them I helped 
And they would acknowledge because it was very profound for them. And I was very, very blessed and grateful to do it. But it was really fun. And I mean, now I've evolved the ability to, you know, to create value or, or, or outrageous or incomparable value from somebody's expertise. And, uh, you know, I do it for a lot of clients as well. But yeah, but it is, I always understood that intangible has to be made concrete. You have to be able to show mm. what it's done, what it's worth, mm, mm. contrast it not to, uh, you know, to uh, a fee, but to all the transactional implications it's going to mean to a business or a life and not in static terms like for the moment, but the ongoing yield you're going to get over and over again, things like that. Does that, does that answer the question? A hundred percent. And I could see so from a positioning point of view over the years, you can see you, you always, you serve different, different industries, but like you said, the icons, right? The, yes. the, the, well, nowadays we call that influencers, right? Yeah. It's the influencers. Right. And, and, and when yeah. you call, not you, but what your industry would call, uh, 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 what do you call them? The, the, the joint ventures. What do you guys call them today? Uh, uh, social media influencers, maybe. No, well, if you do a deal with somebody and you're uh, the joint venture strategic alliance, yeah. Yeah, well, well no, not, but they called them. It was actually very tragic when we did strategic alliances. You're not asking this to me, but I probably should share because I find it very sad. Mm -hmm. Affiliate. When people do affiliate, affiliate, yes, affiliate, yes. I I want to cry because I think there's a way to make them much higher, and I hope today I think it's gotten very marginalized because everybody and their brother goes to people and says, hey. We'll give you whatever, 40%, 50%. Mm. And, and if they agree, everybody sends pretty much the same letter and they do mm. a static mm -hmm. uh, arrangement. What we did in my initial period, we probably did more. We did billions and billions of dollars mm. of power partnering, strategic alliance. We still do. Really very sophisticated joint ventures. But what we would do is never want to waste the opportunity and the value of a relationship on a single and superficial opportunity we would go to the people starting with the people that i had helped and if there were people i hadn't that mm. had a lot of influence i would offer to buy them my time and do something and have them see the, their bank account grow and they became a believer very quickly and were very mm -hmm. comfortable because i didn't ask for anything i would just say i'll, I'll make you 500 grand as long mm. as you'll endorse me and they were pretty happy mm. but what we would do is we would go to them and we would set up integrated very very customized arrangements where first of all the deal was that we would have a specific product program seminar we wanted them to promote but it was never a single promotion we would basically create a sequence of very integrated communications that built on it we would basically if it was a newsletter we would pay to underwrite a special interview mm -hmm. we would put out a special edition that we would write and let the mm -hmm. newsletter edit we would put out uh, content way before anyone figured out to do that, that people could use right away. We would do self-diagnostics. We would give them 20 different techniques they could use right away themselves with the explicit and implicit understanding. We were doing this so that they would apply it and make so much money. Mm. We would pay for our costs for them. Mm. But what we did was we did it very integral, but no two communication pieces were the same. Everyone, and the reason was very strategic, Dan. In that era, there were people subscribing to five or six newsletters. There were people that were buying five or six different biz op or marketing yes. uh, people. And I did not want them to get the same copy from everybody. So I would sit down very arduous and write a very customized, personalized, and very uniquely different uh, cover letter and brochure mm. for every influencer that we had partnerships with and it had much more integrity and so if you're subscribing to five different uh, newsletters and you get five totally different stories that are mm. uniquely contoured to the personality and the and the activities of your different icons there's authenticity and there's and there's integrity to it because you go wow i get that 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 makes sense because i see that that my guy does that and Jay helped him with that or the other, my guy does that and Jay helped him with that. Mm, but, mm. but that wasn't the cool thing. I recognized early in the value of that relationship, not as a performance-based profit center, but as a long-term distribution channel. So what we did mm. because the days that I started, and I'm not an old relic, but I got into it very early. Mm. Nobody realized the value of endorsement and nobody realized the value 
of accessing people's uh, subscriber, buyer, yes. uh, member base. I did. Yes. So when we went in, Dan, the deal I always made with people was, look, this is what I'd like to do. And it's very customized and very integrated and very sequential. There are multiple pieces, processional. But if it works, I want the right of first refusal to control and bring you other qualitative offers. And the reason I want it is not for my benefit. It's yours that I understand the psychology, understand the methodology, understand the positioning. If you just take on crappy offers and throw them out, you're going you're gonna to destroy and diminish the viability of distribution. I will never let an offer be be compromised. I will never let your integrity be compromised. I will always create and negotiate better than you. And even if I get half of your side, you'll make more. So we locked up the rights to the distribution, if that makes sense. Mm, and you see, Jay, like studying your work, I mean, over the years, there's so many different marketers, right? Marketing teacher. There are a lot of them out there. Some of them, your friends, right? This is just my observation. I think what makes you so great is not just, everybody would say Jay Abraham's the marketing genius. I think, of course, but I really think you are, you are a great deal maker from the way you look at deals and you leverage different relationships. A lot of teachers, they're very great at selling something or they're great copywriters, but I don't think they have your insight or your wisdom to do these deals and that's how you create I mean, a fortune doing that. It, that's just well, my observation. No, no, and, and I would agree, but I would agree that it's a, it's a combination. What I, what I have is very unique mm -hmm. and I'm not sure that I would wish it on people, mm -hmm. but when you've spent your life really doing it, not just theoretically teaching it, mm -hmm. and when you've been involved in literally a thousand plus industries, not yes. companies, yes. and when you, I'll give you just an example, I mean, you name, name a concept, referral generation. Yes. Most people don't have any, we have 93. Yes. Lead generation, I know 105. Yes. Uh, strategies, I can give you 500. <laughs> yes. Business models, how many yes. do you want? Yes. And I understand the va I understand motivation. I under again, I'm just not being arrogant. I'm being clinical because I don't want you to think I'm this haughty guy. I'm really not. No, right? no, so I'm no. Very no. knowledgeable. Hundred percent. I understand all the implications of something. And I don't think mm. most people do. Mm. And the nuances when you're making deals, the positioning, understanding that you're not necessarily playing a static game. There's residual, mm. and understanding how to make it so irresistible for the other side. Mm. which is the first step. But even if you make yeah. that deal, now you've got to use that deal to make it irresistible for their buyers or their subscribers. A lot of complexity. And I understand that, I think. Mm. And, and I think it's, I remember when I was studying your work, like at first, first of all, and I was early, like 20s, I couldn't quite understand because it was, it was deep, right? Yeah, I was just learning deep. about marketing. Yes. So I remember I, I, I go through it. I'm like, I don't understand. This is, this is, this is, this is very complex. And as I go through it again, okay, now risk reversal, right? A positioning and, and pricing and, and endorsement, like a lot of these things, but okay, I'm, I'm, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. And I think it's only after that my company's got to a certain point, I go back and we listen to it we study it again. Then now I'm not so much listening to just the strategies. I go a little bit deeper. I want to listen to the thinking pattern. How does Jay view things? How does he think? That's when I had the breakthrough. One of the, you know, you were saying before, before the interview, like the social media and people look at what I do that, oh, you know, Dan just kind of came out of nowhere and he now built this company and on social media. And I always tell people, you know what? I started online back in 2004. Okay. And so really, I have taken a lot of the, what I learned from you and a lot of the even direct response marketers back then, right? Breakthrough advertising and a lot of these different things. And I just kind of filled a gap. There's, there's a gap in between. I don't, you see it like. Yeah, the, no, the, yeah, there's de definitely. Right. They're like the, the new guys, they don't know. They don't understand these, like no. these well, knowledge that's from there. Like, well, how do you view that? Well, I feel it's very sad yes. that a lot of younger people and not, I mean, I've got a lot of young younger adult Followers, children, yeah. mm -hmm. but I think a lot of them basically have been too benefited by easy success and they don't really have, they, they have two things. I don't think many of them, honestly, Dan, have a heartfelt, empathic respect and appreciation for their marketplace. It yes. doesn't mean they don't sell to them. Yes. I think a lot of their copy is superficial. Yes. And I think that 
a lot of them are what I would call one trick pony. And by oh, that, yes. I mean, yes, yes. They're trying to tell you that you're going to build wealth and success with one tactic. And what these people don't understand is the tactic sellers really, they're not trying to sell two of you the tactic. They're starting to trying to sell 202 of you. Mm. So the moment that it gets, it gets, uh, let's say democratized, mm. everyone's got it. It has no value or it becomes the standard for everyone. You got to find another tactic. I just don't think, and it's not their fault, except the fault is they don't, they, they don't have humility enough to say, mm. I really haven't experienced that much of business life and I don't really know all the interworkings, but I do know that this tactic works at least right now. And, and you mm. ought to use it in concert with an integrated strategy or in mm. concert with a really integrated, I, I teach uh, preeminent marketing. And, oh, yeah. And it's one of my favorite. One of my favorite, by the it's way. It's very powerful. Yeah, one of my I, favorite. And I, I think the problem with a lot of young people is they really, their success, and this has happened through many, many people I've helped in my life, their success uh, erroneously makes them deluded to believe they're almost omnipotent. When yes. they're basically very good salesmen and women of a yes. tactic. Yeah. And that's all they are. And they don't yep. have enough maturity, or enough, they haven't lived enough life. They really, they, they could be long term dangerous, believe it or not, even though that's not their intent. They could be long term toxic mm -hmm. if they don't allow themselves to learn more about business life and how lots more elements and factors and forces relate and, and integrate. And, and that seems like a tragedy to me. It's true, and I could see that's why I, people ask me all the time, well, what's the, like, kind of, what's the secret? I'm like, I'm just taking like, all these principles, and I just execute it better than most in the, in the modern age. That's really it, and I've been doing it for a long time. Yeah. But as you know, people don't see that. They just see, oh, they see, no, they the, see the front end. They, they, they just see the front end. They don't, they don't see the depth, and they don't see like, like the, the, the study that, I, that you've done. And as you know, this body of knowledge, your body of knowledge, it's out there. And yeah. a lot, a lot of you give it away for free, even on your you, website. You don't even ask for an opt-in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I remember a lot of those materials. I spend a lot of money acquiring those materials. Now you just because you generous. You know why? Mm. I'm going to tell you. It goes to the same, uh, the same issue we're talking about. About five and a half years ago, I sat down and cried because I found out that 187 separate pieces of my intellectual property were being file shared. It just crushed mm. me. But I decided, okay, even though I'm the one that stands for the strategy of preeminence, which is elevated integrity and a higher ethos, I mm. thought, okay, you young people, because most of them are young and yeah. some of them are, you know, in some countries in Europe or in Nigeria uh -huh. that you can't even know. I said, yeah. if you want to play that game, you don't know who you're playing against. I'm yeah. going to not try to sell things. I mean, we still sell a few things, but high end stuff. Yes. I'm going to become the greatest and the most and the most amazing benefactor, contributor, and advocate champion of the beleaguered entrepreneur. And I'm gonna gift them better content than most people sell because yes. I want them to know that there's more to life than just trying to just get them to pay for things. People should invest in them as well. Mm -hmm. And I and, and I can afford to, so I do. But then we said we've been doing it now five years and I think it's been very helpful for a lot of people. And mm. I think a lot of people have grown, but not just in their money-making ability, but in their ability to add value and contribute meaningfully to the markets they serve. And that really flatters me, and it makes me very happy. One of the most, part of the biggest lesson that I've learned from you that impact me the most is in the beginning, you're always talking about adding value. When anyone who listens to, to your materials, actually rarely you talk about money. You're always adding value, win-win, how to benefit the other party. The money is like a byproduct of, of all of that, right? Yes. So here, here's the real truth that a lot of people don't understand. We are really we're rewarded and compensated in our world, in our life and in our business mm -hmm. for, the, for the quantity, quality, consistency of problems we solve for others and opportunities we make possible. Mm -hmm. And that alone is a very, it's a very profound realization, but it gets mm -hmm. a little bit more complex when you realize that half of the people we need to do it for don't even know yet Mm. that they have those problems or yes. they haven't really verbalized it clearly. And 
they don't realize that the opportunities are available. So it's an education and an enlightenment. Mm -hmm. And you can't do it if you aren't really committed to their betterment. And that mm -hmm. goes towards what I teach. But it's not, it's not as selfless. It's the most selfish thing you can do is mm -hmm. worry more about them. That's where it comes back. Mm -hmm. And just like when you give away so much value to the marketplace and people study materials, they will say, wow, like Jay's material is so good. It's helped me in my business so much. I, I want to hire him for, for a day of consulting. I, I want to work with him on some kind of capacity. Like that's, that's like the easiest sell. You, you don't even need to make it. They would, yeah, it's because they've already delivered value. Well, and also I realized uh, reasonably long ago, the, the majority of small business men and women entrepreneurs mm -hmm. aren't large enough that I could ever work with them on any kind of modified yeah. fee yeah. or percentage. And many of them can't even afford my stuff. Yeah. But I can afford to make a difference in their life and three things happen. They'll raise the standard of, of impact that they make and that alone is, That's great. enhances all commerce and it makes me happy because you're making the world better. Mm. They have a chance to grow large enough they can afford our products or yes. services. Yes. But what, what most people don't realize, you can be uh, a small entrepreneur, a dentist, mm -hmm. but you might be the brother-in-law of somebody who runs a $500 million company. You might That's go true. to church with yes. somebody who's a, a big private equity investor. You might mm. live. I mean, so I am very pragmatic that I know that I can, in, I can enhance freely a lot of people's lives who couldn't mm. transact business with me, but it always comes back and, and it's helping I me. Mean, we don't make as much as most because I don't have, I don't get any opt-ins and we don't put any sales offers yes. in any of the stuff we give away. And people say, yes. what's, what's his angle? We have no yeah. angle. That's it. No, no I want to be a great, a great contributor and a great yes. benefactor. But if you look us up online, yes. it's outrageous. And, yes. and my brand has enormous, it served my strategic needs. I wanted my brand to be more stratospheric, more qualitative, and more incomparable mm. because that's what I think we are. But I wanted to make sure we solidified it. I think we did. A hundred percent. I mean, that's, I see why over the years, the, the personal brand has sustained for so long over the years. I remember I saw one of your um, pro, new program, the China Connections. Yes. And I saw it on Facebook. I'm like, this is something new. Finally, Jay's Jay selling me something. Let's go. Like I can, I can buy something. Right. It is, it is funny. I mean, no, I mean, it, it's, it, it's hilarious because everybody yells at me. My my family works in the business. My wife, they say, are you going to make money? And I say, this is so cool. I can send this out and give this to them and this. And they go, you're crazy. And I go, but you know how many people were helping transform their oh, business lives and their world who would never have anybody else do it for them or understand how. And, and the, you know, the, the, the payoff intangibly and the psychic compensation is really quite profound. And I'm not, mm -hmm. I love making money. I love charging $120,000 a day. I love getting six and seven figure uh, payments for speaking mm -hmm. or doing a seminar overseas. But I really love equally transforming people's lives. If you don't really, if you don't love humanity and you don't fall in love with everybody that, that is striving to be better and all you're trying to do is be crass and avaricious, you'll never really, I mean, even if you make a lot of money, you'll really never be wealthy or prosperous. You can't be. Just like one of the things you taught, it's you don't fall in love with the product and services, fall in love with your customers, right? Cool. Good on you. You studied well. Uh, and most uh, people uh, don't. They aren't, they don't fall in love with their clients. They really don't. They're just saying, oh, I'm the biggest this, I'm the that. And they use vulgarity and they do this and they do that. And it's like, why? Mm. Your stuff, you, you, what they don't understand, and this is tragic, Dan, I've been around over three decades, and I'm yes. not trying to act, add like uh, I'm an old calcified relic sitting on the old marketeers. No, you've uh, seen it all. You've seen, you've seen it all. Yeah. But I can tell you this, over almost four decades, if I told you the name of the person who was the real estate guru mm -hmm, in the late mm -hmm. 70s, the mm -hmm, 80s, the 90s, mm -hmm. it would not be the same the option trading guru, mm -hmm, the business mm -hmm. op guru. So mm -hmm. if you're only here, for, I mean, I'm very proud. I've endured and I'm actually stronger on brand, yeah. you know, at long. this age uh, than I was when I was your age or younger. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's not because 
I'm that, oh, I'm a pretty good promoter. I guess I would say it's probably part of it. But it's mostly because of the value we have constantly strived to contribute and the impact and the integrity of our intention, if that makes sense. Hmm. Jay, I'm not oh, saying about me. It's a model for anybody listening or watching. Hmm, hmm. And it, it's, it's, that's why people, they, they, see, they can see these big names, they come and go. Yes. Like two, three years, they're like, oh, there's the hardest thing. And then after a few years, they're like nowhere they're to be found. Like nowhere to be found. Like disappeared, but, right? But deservedly so because- 100%. They really weren't, they weren't playing a long-term game hmm. for the betterment of their audience. And they don't understand that's the only way you'll hmm. ever endure. Jay, over the years, do you see, like, say, a company, let's say for my listeners, let's say someone from a million dollar level, million dollar in revenue, to $10 million in revenue, to $100 million in revenue, to $200 million in revenue. What, what are some of the bottlenecks that you see that's keeping them from going from this to this, to 10 million, to 10, to 100, and so forth? Okay, that's a great question. And I've not been asked that very often. So mm. I'm, I'm going to give it to you today. Mm. which will be a little more skewed than if you asked me this 10 years ago. Okay. So the first thing I think is that most, if it's entrepreneurs, mm. they, they fail to realize that if you hire the best, you'll cry only once, mm. as opposed to hiring lesser, trying to cut corners and having them either screw up or leave and having to do it over and over again. You want to hire people better than you at what they do, mm. and you want to compensate them very richly, not mm. just always in money, mm. In, mm. In, in other things that, that fulfill them, number mm. one. Number two, you want to have a team that you constantly grow and develop, meaning you mm. train them, you, 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 coach you make them, them a collaborative, mm. they're mm. all on a mission, a crusade. Mm. Mm. with you mm. in behalf of the client mm. you want if you studied my my preeminence you want to respect yes. your clients you yes. want to know that you invest first in the relationship with the clients before yes. you ever have to worry about getting paid yes you want to keep growing your knowledge base yes. most of them don't spend a lot of money what i would call r d testing trying things out mm. hey, hey, i have a personal this is going to sound a little bit weird I have a personal prejudice against the concept of best practices because I think it's limiting mm. because most of the best practices people learn are the best practices from their industry or a couple related ones. Mm. And I've learned that if you look at a thousand industries, there are a lot of higher performing, safer, lower risk, faster yielding, more residual, ongoing payoff uh, to alternatives. So I want to be able to always travel outside my industry mm. and do what I call funnel vision. Yeah. Well, it's a tunnel vision. <laughs> yeah. So that's that. Yes. I think that they aren't trying to really, I think a lot of businesses today, they really don't try to understand the client the way they should. I mm. think that a lot of them aren't as connected, even though everyone says you're connected because you can be digitally connected. I think that's a fallacy. Mm. I think that a lot of companies don't understand that their consumer has, or their buyer mm. has, a, has a number of alternatives, Dan. They can A, buy from another generic company, a competitor. Yeah, 100%. B, yeah. they can buy an alternative that's mm. not yours. And I'll give you an example. In a yeah, yeah. C, the worst, the worst competition you're against is inertia, procrastination, mm. equivoc equivocation, mm. and concentration. Right. And you have to understand all these and be able to address it. Now, that's another thing. When you're trying to grow, I, I, what I said is very interesting. If you're trying to grow your business from here to yep. here, yep. well, first of all, there's barriers of, of uh, capability, competency, infrastructural ability. Mm. And you need to, I mean, you don't go from, a million to 20 with the same team people, the same management, the same internal uh, logistics mm. or, or, or IT. But what happens, they don't realize a lot of them, when you grow too high, too fast, your resource requirements grow even faster. They are like asymmetric. Mm. So mm. your ability to manage a few people, also you've gotta be, this is very important, the role of the CEO of a company 
is to be the strategist, mm. not to do the heavy lifting. Mm. And mm. a lot of them don't extricate themselves from the day to day. They don't spend time doing reflective, critical, strategic, consequential thinking. We mm. They also don't realize something very, very fascinating, and it's really physics, but you either expand or you, contract. you mm-hmm. contract. You mm-hmm. don't, there's no such thing as constancy. You mm. grow or die. Mm. And growing is a function of lots of things. Mm. You want to grow, you got to basically have more than just repetitive of the same model. You got to be able to be more strategic. You got to be able to have better yield. You got to be able to, you know, to get more out of what you're doing. I, I love it. I love it. So, so you, you, what you're saying is the role in the beginning, maybe when you're at a million dollar, you're the doer. You're kind of the ones that make it. Yeah, you happen. do everything. Yeah, when you're at a 10, 20, 30, now not just a team, but your your role as a CEO changes. I found that it's very true. Yes. In the beginning, I I was the best marketer for my company. Yeah. Right? But now I'm definitely not the best marketer for my company. Well, uh, even if you were, your job is to is to set the long term, short term, mid term direction. Yes, yes. Figure out where you have to shift, what you have to integrate, new product, yes. service, uh, media, access vehicles, messaging, yes. and yes. and you can't do that if you're down in down in the, doing the stuff. Yeah. yeah. And, and one more thing that I think mm. is very critical that a lot of entrepreneurs don't realize is that everybody in your service, your team, no matter how, how high ranking, low ranking, menial, mm. whatever mm. they do, they have a very meaningful life. Their hopes and dreams, their wagon is hitched to you, and they have as much relevancy and importance as you do, because a lot of entrepreneurs mm. are obsessed with themselves, yes. and their life and their achievements, yes. and their material things, and they yes. lose track that you've got to be mindful and respectful and nourishing and nurturous of everyone in your employee mm. and your vendors too, if you want to get great outcomes. Mm. And you've got to get people to be collaborative, not to be siloed. They've got to feel respect and appreciation and contribution from and for each person they work with. There's a lot of cool things, Mm -hmm. but most people, everything I've listed, they don't do. Yeah, yeah. And Jay, how do you view in terms of, like you've seen marketing now over like three decades, right? Back then, uh, like we're talking direct mail and full page ads, and then then we have now the internet, email, and and now social media, of course, Facebook. Like just a big picture, how do you view that like this this these phases that we've gone through and for entrepreneurs what do you think they have to do in terms of digital media to to stay on the cutting edge well i'm going to tell you what troubles me and then i'll Mm. tell you something that gratifies me okay what troubles me is i think that the data-based technology-based people have figured out massively impressive ways to game the human condition. <laughs> okay, that's, that's deep. Okay, I, I want to please expand. And I don't think what is being done is as qualitative in its value content, but I think it's far more uh, effective in harnessing understanding of how human nature uh, reacts, proacts, mm. responds, and can be led or guided. I think that that's mm. very impressive. You know, okay. all the remarketing, you know, okay. the funnels, the, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, but I find most of it amazing. I'm like, for me, I am surprised when somebody goes on a web webinar and is surprised you're selling them something or if somebody goes, I'm speaking as an example yeah. in, in a, in a 4,000 person event. That's if you sign up early, I think it's $95 or maybe it's 49. Right. I, I have no idea. I'm not selling anything. Yeah. I'm just a keynote yes. speaker. Yes. And people are shocked when they come to that for two and a half days with, a two hundred thousand dollar fee based speaker that somebody's going to sell them something. Yeah, I mean, I think the ignorance doesn't work in this. I think also that <clears throat> I mean, for me, the thing that gratifies me, mm. and you know this, I I I meet and I know a lot of very successful, higher quality online marketers. Yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. and they 100%. use my stuff, and I think that my, when when they put the methods, the ideals, the principles, the techniques, the, the uh, intellectual understanding that I give people to work, and it's very qualitative, that's wonderful. That pleases me. 
But frankly, I think the majority of them are very manipulative, but they do understand what I'll call human nature response technology, and they're, mm-hmm. they're very good at harnessing it. But mm-hmm. they don't really impress me other than the fact that it's very interesting, but I find it actually tragic because I don't think it's going to the right direction. I don't think there's much deep connection anymore. Mm. That's my feeling. I think there's a lot of superficial connection. Yeah. It's just true. And it's, it's funny now, everybody's talking about being an entrepreneur. It's like, it's the, the new book like thing. Oh, everybody's entrepreneur, right? A, a, a 17 year old on Instagram, oh, I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur. And I just actually find, I guess I see so many people even like on social media, I connect with them. My overall feeling is everyone saying they're entrepreneurs, but overall feeling is people actually less entrepreneurial yeah, you are. Com- compared to like a decade ago, right? I'll tell you something you'll laugh about. Mm. I had the great privilege of being part of Entrepreneur Magazine mm. when it was first starting out. Yes. Now you're going to laugh. <clears throat> yes. Nobody even knew what the word entrepreneur meant. <laughs> All of our mailings on the outside of the carrier envelopes, yeah. and I was doing it before the internet, so they yeah. were in direct mail. Yeah. They had the Webster's Dictionary definition and pronunciation of the word entrepreneur because we, were, we named it entrepreneur, but nobody knew what in the heck an entrepreneur even was. What does it do? Today, yeah. Yeah. If you looked up the literal definition, it is so typically out of uh, congruity with what most people are doing, trying to make money in a online business or in a one trick pony business. Mm -hmm. You know, business, business was intended to bring a really meaningful value to others. That's what business is all about. Isn't it? Yes. Yes. To bring value to the marketplace to solve a problem to fulfill a need. Yeah. And, and if you want to be successful, you want to do it above and beyond and, and better or, or, or more impactful or more mm-hmm. unique or more nicheified than the competition. I think there's, mm-hmm. I mean, I think, as I said, I'm very humbled because I'm not as technological. I'm very, very, very lucky. Technology is not my strong suit, but I help an enormous number of technology companies. Yes. Because if you can explain to me what bottom line is of what the technology is supposed to do mm. for either the business or the consumer they're selling to, I can articulate that. Yeah. I think technology is remarkable. It's fascinating. Mm. It's, mm. But I just think that the, that the people that have, that have the power to use it don't really care as much about the people it is designed to benefit. And that's just my feeling. And not everybody. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a generalization that's a disservice to all the really uh, – preeminent, pre, uh, you know, preemptive, uh, co- you know, ser- sincerely uh, massive value contributing and uh, empathic, respectful people that love the market they serve and mm-hmm. understand them and appreciate them and respect them. But I don't think that's the majority, frankly. Yeah. And the ones who actually, they, they care about the customers combined with uh, technology, with the savviness, those are the ones. Oh, those are fabulous. When yep. I meet those or when I get the privilege to work with those mm. and I see how they integrate that caring. It's funny. Uh, I was on a plane yesterday mm. with the head of a car dealership uh, that is very huge in Los Angeles. Mm. And we were talking about their, their philosophy. And one of the things they, they were explaining was their dad years ago decided to invest in a restaurant in the middle of the dealership. It's a very large dealership. Hmm. Hmm. And he wanted to not have people leave when they needed to go out for a cup of coffee. They have a Starbucks in it. They have all these things because they want to basically provide the things people want. I, I think that people who have wonderful awareness of how to, how to, how to bring you know, benefits, values, protections, enhancements, joy, entertainment, whatever the, the, the bottom line outcome, your product or service when at work in the lives uh, or in the, in, the, in the hearts of a business or uh, an individual provide. Mm. I mean, I, I take my, I don't wear a hat, but if mm. I did, I would take it off. I love and admire and I'm in awe of those people, the ones that just are using technology and, you know, and, and methodology to, as I said, 
uh, to game human nature. It doesn't mean mm. they're not selling something mm. that has usefulness. I just don't think the reason they're doing it. The intent. Yeah. Yeah. The intent is just, okay, we'll make a lot more money. We'll be able to go, mm. uh, you know, the hockey stick will sell out for a billion dollars. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jay, for someone like for yourself, what do you think, what do you want your legacy to be? Like, where do you see yourself now? I know you do some consulting, but most of the, you travel from time to time to studio. That's your passion. Like, yeah, it's, I yeah. still do a lot. I'm going to Paris to do a session. I'm going to mm. Vietnam. I'm going to Singapore. Mm. Uh, and I love, I love introducing strategic and critical thinking and, and preeminent thinking to people. I want my legacy to be that, that I have taught people how to really be a, uh, the greatest value contributors they possibly can be mm. in their marketplaces. Mm. Mm. I want to be able to leave people. I know, I want to know that because people use my work, mm. not just the user, the entrepreneur or the mm. professional or mm. the, business yeah. owner or the corporation is much more prosperous, but I want to know that that prosperity has produced enormous uh, leveraged and, and compound prosperity that's both financial and psychic in the lives of all kinds of people, the clients they serve, the mm. families that work for them, the vendors. And I want to be able to know that the world, very frankly, and this is not so it would be hypey or sound syrupy that I left the world better off because I was in it. 100%. 100%. For, for some, an, an entrepreneur watching this, and I don't know who would, would not have not heard of you, but in case they have not heard of you, uh, what would be a good starting point for them? Of course, they can go to your website. Uh, sure. What, what I mean, would be? The, yeah. I mean, the best way, uh, and if they're very large, get a hold of us and be happy to talk to you about some kind of a, of a compensated relationship. But for mm. the most of them, if they go to abraham.com yes. and on it is something we laughingly named 50 Shades of J. Yes. And we give away, I don't know, 800 hours of video, or excuse me, of audio, a yeah. couple hundred hours of video, uh, all kinds of sessions. Tony Robbins and I answering and solving problems. Damon John and I solving yes. problems. Interviews I did with great people. There's, I think, 200 podcasts on it. There's about 4,000 pages of, of content. There's four full books and none of them sell anything. We do have yes. products for sale, but it's not a prerequisite. You don't have to opt in right now. Someday, maybe I'll change that. But I would say that that, that would be a good start. Mm. And a book, definitely. The, the book That's is a like- a great book. It's on the, it's on, it's on the digitally. Yeah. It's on the yeah. only thing I would say to anybody. Yeah. That book is still, it's timeless except the chapter on online marketing, which is yes. embarrassing, but it was, it was great when it first came out. Now it's laughable, but if you discount that, the rest of it is still it's, applicable. It's great. Jay, what advice would you have for me personally? Well, it sounds like you could give advice to me. You've exploded. You have, you help train people. You've got, you've got uh, SAS services. Mm -hmm. I think that the advice I would give you is if you have been profoundly impacted by my work yes, and it has helped you and you're living, um, let's say the ideals that I would hope you are, yes, that you be, you know, I always believe that the, the adage about show me, don't tell me mm. is the denominator. Mm. You know, people should see by conduct, people mm. should see by example. Mm. And if you keep doing that, as you keep growing and compounding, mm -mm. great. And, you know, if you, I mean, if you have been impacted, you want to help them, I know certainly help me, mm. tell anybody you want, send out anything you want, tell them to go there and not for me to profit. We don't even get uh, opt-ins, but I, I created the, you know, the, the resources so that they would be used and shared Yes. And, and, and uh, impact people. And I'm eager to get everybody who could use them using it, whether I mm. earn a penny from it or not. So, I mean, I think that would be good. But I think the thing is, don't ever take yourself too seriously. Mm. Always be, you know, um, um, it was Peter Drucker, the, <clears throat> the now deceased, but the famed business consultant said, I'll give you two little quotes that are very mm. good. He said, 
if you're not constant as a business, if you're not constantly committed to make what you do and how you do it obsolete, you can make sure your competitors are constantly committed to wow. do it for you and to you. I love the it. The other thing I would yes. say that, that you, I, I believe already do, but it's a great, it's a great um, philosophy for your people. Most entrepreneurs, business owners, and aspiring ones today, given how competitive and brutally difficult it is to command attention, um, access to minds, trust, all these things, mm. they, they, they non-verbally struggle in their mind and heart, Dan, with a really weird question. The question is, am I worthy of this goal? Can I really make you know, a half a million dollars? Mm. Can I really mm. go from a million True. to five? Am I, am I good enough? Can I, yes. You know, can I compete mm. successfully? Can I still be in this business? Can I, mm. can I achieve my vision? Can I have a future? Can I have uh, you know, uh, some wealth creation, some security. But when you realize how much more is possible from mm. time, from effort, mm. from access to a market, mm -hmm. from, from interaction, from, um, from people, from media, mm. from uh, all this, you're, the, the question you should be asking yourself is not, Am I worthy of the goal? It's the opposite. Is this mm. goal worthy of me? Mm. Because there's so much more that you should get from everything you do, everyone you do it with, yes. every way you do it. Yes. And I would like, if I can leave people with a message, that's it. It's getting more out of what you've already got, whatever right. they have. It's, it's very, very true. And just by shifting the thinking, and yes. very often actually it doesn't cost more resources. It just, no. a, 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 like you said, like a paradigm shift. When you see the world from a different perspective, suddenly, oh, that works. Oh, I can put that deal together. I can add value this way. Oh, I'm not marketing to my existing customers. I'm not asking them questions, right? Like it's, yes. it's fascinating. And that's what makes it very interesting. I think then business becomes it, a lot of fun. We've identified, this is interesting, in a typical revenue system, 61 potential impact points, not just in the macro, but in the, in the, in the micro that could be increased five, 10, 15, 20%. Yes. And most people don't even recognize what they are. We talked about yeah. the referral systems, 93, yeah. 93 yep. systems. Yep. I have the cassette, I have the have cassette tapes. Life. Yeah, I have the cassette tapes. I still yeah. do. From and, and it was great for what it was. Don't yeah, you it's, it's great. Yeah, and, and also the mastermind marketing. I love that. We have uh, 150 ways you can access. Oh, this is pretty cool. You can access other people's resources. You know, we, we've been done, you know, strategic alliance, all that. But if you look at it differently, mm. I call it the unlimited business checkbook because there's no reason any entrepreneur can ever claim to be resource uh, impaired or impeded or constrained ever mm. again because whatever you need, somebody else has got it. And if you understand strategically how to mm. give them more of what they want, mm. they'll, they'll make what you need available to you and you can pay for it out of the results. So, yes. I mean, a lot of things like that. Yes, yes. Well, Jay, I hope this is the beginning of, of a long-term relationship. It's I the kind love of first that. I'm step. I'm very proud of you. Thank I'm you. I'm tickled. Like, I'm, I'm smiling like the Cheshire cat <laughs> to know that I had an impact on your life because I know you're doing wonderful things and you're very, uh, your, your success gratifies me. And you're, Thank you. And you're, you're showing me that you've studied my work. Just, it, it thrills me. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. I hope this is the first step to introduce you to my audience. I would love to, to do more and, and bring them to, to your work. Well, that'd be, make me happy too. Let's do it. 100%. Thank you, Jake. Thank you. And I'll send you all the things I promised. Appreciate it. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you.